Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day to start things off. A new report from the digital asset manager known as CoinShares suggests a massive transfer of wealth is set to benefit Bitcoin. According to the firm, about $68.4 trillion in wealth owned by baby boomers and the silent generation will be handed down to millennials and Generation X over the next 25 years. And millennials' investing habits appear to be quite different from their forefathers. CoinShares highlights a survey from blockchain capital that shows a significant portion of respondents would rather own Bitcoin than owning government bonds, stocks, real estate, and gold. And they have a little chart right here. The institutional asset manager Grayscale also points to the huge shift in wealth as a potential boon. For Bitcoin, the firm says it's possible to impossible. Yeah, there we go. The firm says it's impossible to tell just how much capital may flow into Bitcoin. But managing director Michael Zonenshine says he believes there's no doubt the leading cryptocurrency is resonating with a millennial audience. A separate study from Charles Schwab found that millennials are choosing to buy the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust or the GBTC over Netflix, Disney, Microsoft and Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway. We've had a couple of this. This ties relatively and not, and not even loosely. This ties almost directly into the other things that we were talking about before the other video. Where I was talking about the potential growth of Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency space and more so the dare I say predictions that people have been predicting for this next decade as far as exactly what's going to happen with Bitcoin. And they all have once again, especially for this year if not the end of this year, have come to the exact same conclusion as to the exact, or rather where they think Bitcoin's price will be by the end of this year. When you have 15 people saying what they think and then 14 of them come to the exact same conclusion, well, there you go. The other part of it is, is younger people, I'll say it this way, typically just called millennials, don't care for other investments that my parents and or grandparents made. I mentioned before, I'm not into gold, I'm not into silver, I'm not buying any government bonds, I'm not getting anything that's going to give me a 1% return. I focus heavily myself on art, real estate, and crypto. Because these have the greatest returns, they have the longest bit of, uh, I want to say longevity. Crypto has a very long run ahead of it. <clears throat> real estate people always need a place to live, and art is art the art market is actually quite great so this is not the first time that we have once again i know i say that phrase a lot but you have to understand the patterns these people put a lot of money into this research they're not simply doing it because they like to see the numbers on the screen and they go yeah that's that's going to be great in 25 years they're doing it to see what the future trends are going to be and when they keep all coming to the exact same conclusion well there you go here's the actual article or the google drive PDF about what happened in 2019, the investment trends that they saw and where they think that everything is going to go. I'm not going to go through the entire PDF because it's like 900 million but thousand pages long. It's 137. Anyway, um, right. That is the report of the future of trends for Bitcoin and where people think the money is going to go. I'll tell you right now, everyone who's my age or younger or slightly above i mean the, the 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 millennial number gap is is pretty wide um everyone i know is either investing in just real estate or just crypto or just real estate and crypto i don't have many friends who invest in art i know i haven't heard anyone tell me i just bought a government bond since about 1947 um stocks as well stocks I know more people who invest in sneakers than stocks because sneakers have outperformed stocks as well. I don't know. Yeah, that's it's 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 kind of it's, I, I, I don't want to say passe, but no one really invests in, in bonds or stocks except for like whatever there, there's some. But no, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Should I? No, no. OK, I'm done. Because I, I see other people on. I still see people on YouTube, other YouTube channels. And it's, it's kind of like one of those moments like where I keep saying, if you see that something else is working, why wouldn't you do that instead? 
kind of like a um for some reason my algorithms on on youtube as of late have been giving me like a lot of like you can get rich by doing this you want to get rich by doing so and so i can help you and a lot of like um how i have a a a dividend portfolio for stocks and it's like these people talking about yeah i get a i get a 1.2 percent uh return on my stock and that's the money that i get for my dividend there was one where some guy was talking about i think um passively passively i think he said per month i think he was making around 15 20 25000 somewhere around there from his stocks but he failed to mention or rather he mentioned at the very end that he started when he was like 17 or 18 and his parents had given him like $50,000 and this now he's now like 38 years old so of course over, over that course of time you're going to have that much wealth but it was it was given he, the information was told to the public as if he had done this around two years ago and all you needed was a hope dream wish and a prayer and five bucks in your pocket and you would have the exact same thing so yeah i i think there's a generational gap dare i say because younger people I have a lot of friends who, yeah, whatever. I have a lot of friends who bought into crypto because they see the potential for the returns and even just the previous returns. And even when, 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 when you talk about situations where Bitcoin over the course of a two-week period goes up by anywhere from 8 to 14%, which would take a stock, not even a bond, stock and or real estate an entire year, it draws a lot of attention to it, but it seems like the more traditional crowd doesn't see it i i don't know anyway there's the um there's the pdf once again and without further ado let's move on next up in a recent blog post published by brian armstrong who is the ceo of coinbase one of the largest cryptocurrency exchanges in the market he shared curious information on the number of millionaires there would be in the world if Bitcoin had reached or does reach 200,000 US dollars at the same time, he has also shared other things that could help or could happen. I can't read happen to the cryptocurrency market later on this year. Brian Armstrong explained that Olaf Carlson, we and Balaji Srinivasan consider that if Bitcoin reaches a price of 200,000 US dollars per coin, more than half of the world's billionaires will be from cryptocurrency. He explains that more pro-technology people will have access to large amounts of capital, which will certainly be positive for the cryptocurrency market. However, he didn't say whether this is going to happen in 2020. I doubt it. I give a, a $200,000 Bitcoin. I give it to 2026, 2027, heading up to the, the other ultimate happening. Uh, nonetheless, he left the door open for that to happen in the future. Regarding the influence that this could have on the market, Armstrong said, presumably, this will increase the amount of investment made in science and technology, and I also think we'll see more crypto folks, folks, okay, turn to philanthropy. We've already seen this with the efforts like Pineapple Fund, Give Crypto Org, and the Giving Pledge. About decentralization and privacy improvements, he commented that this was your place to fund it. What was the other interesting part that he said? I think he was talking about coins having like uh, private features, transactions on them. Uh, central banks implement the this currency. Uh, you know which part I'm more interested in. I, we're going to have a lot of coins that are going to have private transactions. Woo! The other part that I really care about is... I don't want to say the money. That makes me sound greedy? Shallow, it, greedy and shallow. The point is, remember all those people who have 10,000 Bitcoin and 100,000 Bitcoin? I don't know if you guys saw the, the, the news article. And I, I try to just focus on uh, the, the happenings within the cryptocurrency market space. Um, people, people mentioned before why I... Or they were surprised that I don't get involved in, in, in Twitter crypto politics or the other crazy things that people have said. Um, remember that I, I don't want to give too much information away about them. There was because you'll know exactly who I'm talking about if I do. There was someone in the cryptocurrency space a couple of years ago who had made headlines for being the youngest millionaire in the cryptocurrency world space. Sometime last year, for some reason, I don't know if he drank the Kool-Aid or not, someone 
he came out and said that Bitcoin was garbage and that he knew that Bitcoin by the end of last year would end up hitting zero dollars. And I think he was selling all of his coins off for, for, for Bcash or something like that. Uh, it is the 9th of January 2020 and Bitcoin is still not at zero dollars. So I wonder um, if he actually sold. That was just something that popped into my head because I was thinking about the actual future. Uh, imagine, uh, imagine a world where you yourself owned a thousand Bitcoin and you sell it. You're like, I want Bcash instead. And then Bitcoin, the number one coin goes up to $200,000. How sad would you be? I think I would, I'm not going to even say it. Uh, this is a crypto channel and I can't say that out loud. The entire point being, we have spoken before about this topic randomly. It was kind of all over the place. Uh, the fact that Brian Armstrong said it kind of also lets me know that it's also happening in the brains of other people as well. When the last cryptocurrency bull run happened in 2017 and everyone went completely insane, there were tons of new billionaires that were made. I think the Wink of Eyes became like multi-billionaires or something like that. The I think the two of the heads of Ripple became billionaires. I think there was also, what was the news? There was news that some artist, some singer was also, I think he knew the heads of Ripple or something like that. I forgot what the exact story was, but I think he was rumored to have, I think several tens of millions of XRP or something like that. And therefore he also became, a. I forgot what the news story was, but anyway, uh, the news about the trends are out there. Even if you have 10 Bitcoin, you would still, you would still have two million US dollars worth of numbers on your screen in a digital currency. So it's still nothing to really scoff at. We've spoken before about the, the advent of trillionaires, which is also expected to happen because of the cryptocurrency space, so all the massive accumulation. Like think about how much accumulation is actually happening behind the scenes that we just si simply don't hear about. Like I don't hear when you buy, and therefore we're not gonna also probably hear when some other rich person is probably buying about a, a million, not a million, Maybe a million dollars. I was gonna say I was gonna say a thousand Bitcoin or a million dollars. I guess both of them kind of work per week or per month. Anyway, um, I used to talk a lot about it, and I've kind of stepped back because I'm waiting to see how the future unfolds. Um, the world that's going to exist in my eyes within the next ten years is going to be a very different one than what we've seen right now. I don't know if you guys were looking at all this stuff from um, from CES. And all the new technologies and all the new stuff that they already have that's kind of being waited to, you know, to, to be rolled out. The next 10 years are going to be insane. And if you want to use the term transfer of wealth, I, I find that to be a very heavy statement. But something's going to happen. A lot of people are going to be left behind. And I, that's not to be mean It's or like cocky. It's more like a... No, uh, in a world where things are... Where money is finite and the richest people already in the world already holding that finite asset, um, people just will be left behind. Here's the actual blog post for it right here. It says, what will happen to cryptocurrency in the 2020s? And without reading through the entire thing, I'll let some move on. Next up, Jens Weidmann, president of the Bundesbank, the central bank of Germany, argues that the world leading the world's leading financial institutions are still not sure about what the future of digital money will look like and what role reserve banks might play in supporting the global economy in a recent interview with german news outlet handelsblatt weidman cautions against reacting too quickly to the facebook led libra cryptocurrency project by introducing a digital version of the euro Instead of focusing on implementing its own virtual currency, Weidman recommends that banks focus on reducing transaction processing times and also making it cheaper to send payments, but they're not. How many of you think that banks in the next 10 years are going to try and lower their fees, raise their interest rates for you so that you make more money from your account, and that it doesn't take, even taking 24 hours to send a payment is far too much now. The idea that someone, anyone, can copy and paste a 300-page book, throw it into an email, a Gmail, a mail, whatever mail people are using today, 
and send it to you and it gets there in 14 seconds, but it takes the numbers 365.55 US dollars a day or more or seven days to get to someone on the other side of the world is ridiculous. They're not going to change anything anytime soon. And I think the only real change will be from them trying to keep up with the ever-changing facade of the cryptocurrency market. But I, I assume assumption that anything they do is just going to be very janky. Um, the other interesting part that he said, Weidman affirms that Facebook startled the world with its bid to build a corporate digital currency. He said such internet companies which large pl with large platforms are a difficult topic for competition keepers. The large amount of data they can hoard can give them advantages over smaller competitors. The federal government is therefore working on modernizing competition law. Another step would be to support citizens in determining how their data is used. For those of you who don't know, and I think a lot of people may be unaware of this, Germany has a very interesting history when it comes to... Um, spying data collection and stuff like that germany is still one of the very few places that i've been to in the world where you may go to restaurants and or cafes and people still pay in cash or even sometimes you are told no we do not accept cards i know that sounds really weird uh but there are places in the world still like this so i think if there is a euro coin i think germany will be probably one of the last places to implement this as the german public does have an issue with surveillance um however we keep getting news it's about every other day now from some other european country about the actual experimentation and or looking at the possibility of a, a central bank digital currency i think they are on the way. A lot of people predicted that... Well, first of all, last year we got news that it was six countries who were working on them. Um, I think a couple more have come out already. As in, like, talking about them, not the actual, like, making of them. And by the end of this year, it's expected to be 10 to 15 countries will have full-blown central bank digital currencies. Yeah. Here's the actual article right here. Mm, nope. Here's the actual article right here. And yeah, uh, let's move on. Next up, Thailand's oldest bank, Siam Commercial Bank, or SCB, has partnered with Ripple to create a mobile application powered by blockchain to deliver instant, low-cost cross-border payments per a blog post from Ripple on the 8th of January. The app, known as SCB Easy, was demoed in December during Ripple's annual consumer event known as Sowell. The demo reportedly demonstrated its ability to send cross-border cross -border payments in seconds. SCB Senior Vice President of Commercial Banking announced on stage by saying, it's so difficult to send money and receive money today. People must physically go to a bank branch, fill out long and complicated forms, and wait for the payment to be received with no transparency. With our service, their loved ones from abroad can transfer a payment and receive money immediately. I, the, the banking system now is horrible. Um, I know I'm not the only one who's experienced this. If you see cryptocurrency prices going down on a weekend, and you try to put your money into it really fast, and you have to you realize, like I said, this has happened to me, and I'm trying to send my money, you have to wait for the bank transfer to go through, you have to wait for this to actually end up happening, and it takes about three to four business days. And by the time you look again, the prices are back up where they were before. And yeah, following this, Sriomporn, the guy's name, showed the app in action, sending a payment to a recipient bank account within 40 seconds. There was no mention anywhere. Here's the actual blog post right here from Ripple.com. It says, an app for millions that runs on Ripple. There's no indication anywhere uh, that this is going to be using, what is it called, ODL, O-L-D, O-L-D, on-demand liquidity, O-D-L, <laughs> O-L-D. Um, however, um, this is another partner for Ripple, uh, but once again, no indication that they're going to be using XRP for this, which is a bit of a shame, especially if millions of people are going to have 
access to this. Let's move on. Um, and, and for some reason, this is everywhere news. The Litecoin Foundation has recently announced a new partnership with BitGo, a recognized custodian in the cryptocurrency market. BitGo is expected to be helping the Litecoin Foundation with its multi-signature wallets for their custody solution. According to a recent tweet released by the Litecoin Foundation, they are currently working with BitGo's multi-signature wallets for their custody solution. This was everywhere. I'm, I'm not sure why. Um, there was no actual talk about the usage of Litecoin. Uh, it's about a custody solution. We've seen those tons of times, maybe because Litecoin has a new partner or they're using each other sim symbiotically for their custody. I, I don't know why this was everywhere, but this news was everywhere. Litecoin has partnered with BitGo for their custody solution. Sure. And in the weirdest news I think we've had in quite some time, there's a crypto ATM known as Instacoin. They now offer dollar pegged stable coins for deposit and withdrawal, including Tether. The leading crypto ATM operator in Canada will also add a total of seven stable coins to its device. And whoever wrote this article right here has never seen the enter button uh, because it's just one gigantic clump of words. It says ATM selection covers most major altcoins. The selection goes beyond Tether, which is the most liquid and most widely used. Among dollar peg coins backed by assets, the devices will offer USD coin, true USD, Paxos, and Gemini dollar. The algorithmic stablecoin DAI will be available both as a single collateral and multi collateral. Who, wh why? Um, the news in 2019 was fairly great for. Um, I, I can't even say Bitcoin ATMs anymore. Many of them are now crypto ATMs where you can buy multiple different cryptocurrencies on these devices. The entire point of a crypto ATM, for those of you who were not here in 2012, 2013, 2014, is if you do not have immediate access to a computer, if you are outside and you will want to get more cryptocurrency, if you are trying to do things privately on your own time without someone looking over your shoulder, you can go to a cryptocurrency ATM and you can buy a decentralized cryptocurrency yourself. Put it on your phone, put it on your wallet, put it on your computer, put it on your ledger. Why anybody would want to deposit a stable coin onto a crypto ATM, that's, that's the part that kind of gets me the most. Deposit a, a stable coin or withdraw a stable coin. There are very few, I don't get it. There are very few places, in, why? There are very few places in the world that accept other coins outside of Bitcoin, Litecoin, and Ether for payments. Just for random things around the world. There are fewer that accept stable coins. I think, I can't think of even five companies that accept stable coins as a form of payment. None off the top of my head, not even close. Um, why they did this, who knows? It could be a way for, why deposit to them? Why would I want to deposit a stable coin? Why wouldn't I just go on to Binance or to Coinbase and get a stable coin there? What would be, what's the, why? Um, I'm getting flustered. Uh, if you are in Canada and you are looking to buy some Tether or deposit some Gemini dollars, I mean, boy, this is your lucky day. You've, you've waited. And now here it is. I, oh my gosh. Like what, what were, this was also like an, an, a couple of websites. And I was, I was like, okay, clearly this is, it's not major news. It's actually some of the dumbest news that we've had in a long time. I'll be as honest with you as possible. Also, another really weird thing, um, stay with me on this one. This flag has folds in it. There are multiple ruffles, folds. If this fold right here was unruffled, this flag would not make any sense and it would not be in that same shape. This part over here would be somewhere over here, therefore making that Canadian flag completely incomplete. Who made this photo? Who made this article? I'm, I'm, I'm going to move on. I, I, sh I shouldn't be this, this angry in the morning. 
As always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters. They are Bake Me a Cake, Arf Medic 17, Anytime Fitness, Monks Corner Staff, Bodie McBoatface, Yes to Crypto, Miller Hitch Chest Every Day, and Kyle Skips Leg Day, Minting Coins, Jeremy Fox, Jim Gardner, Anthony Charles, Nick Mangialavori, Paxis, Crypto and Beer Shipmate, Vlad the Impaler, Richie Rich the Third, Nick Kanaya, Setsuna, Damien, Nicholas Renner, One Piece, One Love, Crypto Artist, Coldy 3D, Milwezy, Adobo, Bankroll Network, Crypto Joe, 242 to the World, Wise Knight, Errol, Jared Schneider, Brady Neals, Master Ventures in Thailand, Moham Maroney, Adam Grasick, Todd Mullis, Bare Bones Mining, A Bibliophobia, The Animal Reader, John Sarson, Mr. Pickles, Nostromo, and Professor Wally from Gun, Bot University. Thank you all very, very much for your support at the moment. For those of you not looking at the screen, the prices are down. Not down, down, but still down. There was news that apparently uh, it's it's kind of annoying when politics bleed into into finance. However, um, the news was is that Bitcoin apparently had been rallying along with gold and many other assets on the news that there could have potentially been a war-like situation. Apparently, yesterday, the news is um, that only sanctions are going to happen at the moment. And after that news came out, the market began to slide down. Same with the price of gold and many other safe haven assets, if you can say it that way. So, Bitcoin is floating near trying to push up to 8,000. Uh, this seems to be the only reason for a decline in prices. It's been around anywhere from 18 to 22 hours at this point since prices have slunk down. No other news has transpired, appeared, uh, tried to give an explanation as to why prices went up or as to why prices went down. But at the moment, this is the news that we have. So this is the news that we have to go off of. I mean, to be fair, we also... Um, Bitcoin was at 6,800, so we're still a good 1,100 US dollars above where we were just around two weeks ago. So the red looks bad, but if you caught that dip from before, or if you had Bitcoin for quite a while, you are still making money. I hope you all enjoyed. Hope you all are having a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope that it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again. For watching and or listening and i will most certainly be talking to you all soon see you <laughs>